Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to a concept called integration. Essentially it's the inverse, the opposite of differentiation. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with differentiation. If not, just go on my website and look under the tutorial index for differentiation. Okay, well to start the ball rolling, let's just take an equation y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x. And if we were to differentiate this in the usual way with respect to x, we would therefore have dy by dx equals, and if we differentiate the first term, we would get 3x squared. Differentiate the second term, we'd get minus 6x, and differentiate the third term here, we'd end up with plus 4. Now, when we talk about integration, it is essentially the inverse of differentiation. In other words, if I had dy by dx then equal to 3x squared minus 6x plus 4, as we have up here, then if I integrate this, do the inverse of it, then what I would have is that y would equal x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x. Because if we differentiate this, we get this as a result. So when we're integrating, we're kind of undoing this, okay? Undoing this, trying to find out what we originally differentiated. Now this is not the only way of writing the solution. What we can do is use what is called an integral sign. We can say that y equals the integral. It's like a, an s, an elongated s, the integral sign. The integral of, and we are writing 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. We're going to integrate this. And we say that we integrate it with respect to x. We write it like a dx on the end. So what do we differentiate that gives us this? Well, we've seen that it is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x. Or is it? There's a twist to this. Okay, I'll show you. If I was to do y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x, the same as what we had over here, but put a number on the end, a constant, let's say plus 2. What would we get this time if we differentiated it? Well, we're clearly going to be differentiating the first three terms, and we're going to get exactly the same result as we had there, 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. But when we differentiate the plus 2 with respect to x, it being a constant, it goes to 0. So we end up with exactly the same result. So what would happen if I had minus 2 here? It would still be the same result. Or minus 1, plus 1, still the same result. It doesn't matter what you've got on the end here. If it's a constant, it will still give you this result. Because constants, when you differentiate them, just go to 0. So we've got to be very careful then. It's incorrect for us to say that if we have dy by dx equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 4 and we integrate it, that we're going to get this result. Because clearly there could have been a number on the end. And we call that a constant of integration. And we write that as plus, and we tend to use the letter C, although you'll quite often see a K or maybe another letter used on the end. But these are common ones, c for a constant or k for a constant. Now, this is all very well because we could see this one here. We could see that if we differentiated this, we got this. But there's going to be occasions when you're going to be given an equation and you've got to work out what it originally was before you differentiated it. And so we've got to find out some rules. And that's the next thing we're going to look at. Suppose we have a term in our expression, okay, up here, 
of the form ax to the power n, a being a constant. How do we integrate it? How do we know what the answer is? What did we differentiate that gave us this result? Well, it's got to be the opposite of differentiation. With differentiation, take this term for instance, we multiplied the power with the number at the front and then took one away from the power. When we're doing integration, we've got to do the opposite. And the opposite of that is to essentially add 1 to the power. So we've got ax to the power n. We add 1 to the power and it becomes ax to the power n plus 1. And we divide by the new power, n plus 1. And strictly speaking, we should have a constant on the end. But I'll just leave that off for the moment. And the other thing I want to draw your attention to is that if we have to integrate a term which is a constant, let's say a with respect to x, that's this one here for instance, what we get is that constant multiplied by x. So in other words, if you have a constant term, what you would have differentiated would have been an ax term. ax, if you differentiate it, gives you a. So if you integrate a constant with respect to x, it must have been ax. Well, these are important ideas which you've got to commit to memory. So we'll just highlight that and I'll run through a couple of examples to show you how we use this rule. Well, the first example, what I'd like to do is just go back to the one we've just been doing. This one here and show you how that rule works. So in other words, if we had to integrate 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. By the way, there's several terms here. And when you integrate, make sure you put them in brackets if you've got more than one term. We're going to integrate this with respect to x. So we put a dx on the end. Now, according to the rule, if we take the first term, this is an ax to the power n term, something like this. What we do is we add 1 to the power, so we've got to the power 2 at the moment, so we add 1 to the power, that becomes to power 3, and we divide by the new power, so that's going to be 3 down there. When we come on to the next term, this 2 is an ax to the power n term, a being minus 6, n being to the power 1. So this will be minus 6x, add 1 to the power, so it goes up to 2, and divide by the new power, 2. And when we come on to the last term, this is one like this, a constant. So if you've got a constant, a being 4 in this case, you just put an x on the end, so it becomes plus 4x. And we mustn't forget the constant of integration, which I'm going to call plus c because there could have been a number on the end, as we've seen up here. OK? Now, all we need to do is just clean this up. And for the first term, you'll notice that the two threes cancel. 3 into 3 goes 1, 3 into 3 goes 1. And for this term here, 2 into 2 goes 1, 2 into 6 goes 3 times. This term doesn't simplify any further. So what we've got is x cubed for the first term. Next term is minus 3x squared over 1, or just simply minus 3x squared. Then we've got plus 4x, and then plus c, the constant of integration. And you can see that is the result that we have up here. Although in this one, I use k for the constant of integration. OK, so hopefully you can see how that works. Let's do one uh, more example, OK, just in case you're just slightly unsure still. Just suppose we said if dy by dx, we're given dy by dx equals, say, 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2x plus 5. And we need to find out what y was. Then y is going to be equal to the integral of this equation here. 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2x plus 5. Again, we've got several terms here, four terms in fact, 
make sure you put them in brackets and then we have dx on the end. We're integrating with respect to x. So according to the rules here, the first term becomes 4, add 1 to the power, so it becomes x to the power 4 over 4. Next term, plus 6x squared, add 1 to the power, so it becomes 6x cubed, and divide by the new power, so that would be divide by 3. This term here, remember the power here is 1, so we have minus 2x, add 1 to the power, becomes 2x squared, and divide by that new power, 2. And here we have a constant on the end, so the integral of any constant is just that constant times x, so that would be plus 5x. And again, don't forget the constant of integration, plus c, or any other letter you like. Okay? Clean this up. We notice that the 4's cancel. 4 into 4 goes 1. 3's cancel here. 3's into 1 goes three, once, I mean, and 3's into 6 goes 2. This term cancels. 2 into 2 goes 1. 2 into 2 goes 1. And that's it. All we need to do now is just simplify, and we've got x to the power 4 then, plus 2x cubed, minus x squared, plus 5x, and that constant of integration. All right? Well, I hope that's given you a basic idea of how to integrate terms that are of the form ax to the power n or a constant. Now, in the next tutorial, what I want to do is extend this idea to showing you how we can integrate various functions where we've got like square roots and uh, cube roots and fractional expressions and so on. Okay, so I hope you'll look at that if you want to uh, gain a little bit more uh, confidence. Okay.